BenClark.com. I am your host, Banjo Ben. This is my favorite sister. Today, anyway. <laughs> uh, this is Penny, one of the twins. And they live in Texas now, but I got them here in Tennessee at the pick and parlor. I love having you in because uh, you're really good at a lot of things on mailing guitar, but you're really good, especially at this cross picking stuff. And we're going to learn some Jesse McReynolds style cross picking today. Mm -hmm. Is that what you call it? Uh, where we do a down and then double up. You just saw the version of Wildwood Flower. Uh, that she played. What we're going to do is we're going to first cover some exercises, learn how to do this double up up pattern over two strings, then we're going to do it over three strings, um, and then we're going to teach the uh, Wildwood Flower that you just saw. So if you're watching here on YouTube or Facebook, here on the wall, I'll ask you to come over to the website, banjobenclark.com, where you can join as a Gold Pick member, see videos that I make like this each and every week. You can download the tabs, watch the 30 minute video lesson. I also have three different speeds of MP3 rhythm tracks that you can download. All right, you ready to dive into this one? Yeah. Okay. Penny, I love this uh, technique of the double up, or double, no, down double up. Mm -hmm. I know that most all the time I teach on the website to do strict down up picking techniques. Mm -hmm. And I do that for a reason, because when you're going really, really fast, um, a strict down up technique will produce, I think, more more speed, more um, good tone, more power. Uh, but there's also these other techniques. Who was it that that you think really made this most popular? The down up up technique. I say Jesse McReynolds. Okay, and, and for those of you who are familiar uh, with Jim and Jesse, Jesse is one of our favorite mandolin players. If you're not familiar with Jim and Jesse. Go by their records and listen to uh, to Jesse's mandolin playing. He, he gets some incredible sounds out of this. Um, where did you first learn how to play this, or how did you first learn how to play it? Well, I just learned um, back in college at South Plains. Um, Joe Carr, my mandolin instructor, he kind of introduced this technique to me. He said this would be fun to learn, and, mm -hmm. it, and it really was. Okay, and, and a lot of people would think that this is kind of just a niche deal, and it kind of is, um, but you use it in your other playing as well, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I know a lot of folks may be familiar with uh, our Purple Holes music and the um, Be That My Vision version. Mm -hmm. You do a lot of this double or down double up type mm -hmm. stuff. Um, what I like about it, it kind of brings in a, a banjo type drive mm -hmm. to the mandolin that you normally don't have with down up, down up techniques. Um, can you give us a little example, just a couple yeah. measures of like Be Thou My Vision, how we or, might see this or hear I'll it? I'll do like, just, I'll do something like. Cool. That wasn't Be Thou My Vision. Right, that's uh, My Jesus, I yes. Love Thee. I noticed that that was in the key of A. Yeah. And then yes. we're doing while with flower in the key of D. D. So have you noticed that there's certain keys where this will work better than others? I'd say D and A are, are the ideal keys to right. do this in. Why is that? Because you can really take advantage of the open strings. Okay. Of course, so, Jesse would do it in all kinds of different Oh, yeah. You can keys. do it in any key. But you're just going to have to you, play more closed positions. Uh -huh. And you can also, whenever you do it in D and A, you have, it seems like, more opportunity to use three strings. Oh. And then when you do it in G, or when you, if you do it like an F or something, then, or um, just even even E, really, you don't have as much opportunity to use as many strings. Okay. So when you get the DNA, then we've got more of those mm -hmm. open strings in common that work well yeah. with the chords. Even though we're in the key of D for Wildwood Flower, we play that E string, which isn't technically mm -hmm. in the D chord, um, but it, it kind of serves as a little drone. Mm -hmm make it sound almost like a banjo or something yeah really cool i appreciate you coming in thanks for having me and sleeping on my couch <laughs> and shooting this video let's let's learn some uh double or down double up techniques on the mandolin now before we dive into that wildwood flower version we need to really get our technique down so i've wrote some exercises here both two and three string exercises that we're going to learn first then we'll dive into that tab of wildwood flower um, let's go ahead and pull the tab up there. You'll notice that I have the pick stroke um, directions beneath each one of the notes. Uh, so the whole time through this, we're doing down, up, up, down, up, up. And the trick to that, the most difficult part about it, is changing strings but keeping that pick pattern going. So we're going to start off on our first two strings first, just the A and the E string. We're not going to add any fretting hand uh, notes here at first. We'll, we'll add that in a second. We're just going to concentrate on our pick hand. 
and we're going to um, do kind of a, a banjo type exercise here. We're going to do a downstroke on the A string, first note. Then we're going to do an upstroke through the E string. And then we're going to do another upstroke through the A string. So down, up, up. Okay, and one thing that I'll find that helps me is a lot of times when I'll come through that upstroke on the E, I won't just do it. I don't want to do it out like that. I want to kind of do the upstroke towards the A string, and the A string a lot of times will stop my pick, okay, as I go up. And I will do a lot of this with my fingers more than I will my wrist. And then, since I'm already there on that string, I can do my next upstroke. So just the first three notes of this exercise looks like this. Can you do that with me? Down, up, up, down, up, up. And we're just going to do that two times in a row here, measure one. Down, up, up, down, up, up. Now that's six notes total. Of course, we have eight eighth notes in a measure, so we got two more notes to fill out. At that point, we're just going to do a regular down, up, down, up to finish out measure one. So all of measure one slowly looks like this. Now all you mandolin players out there are getting a taste of what banjo players have to deal with all the time. We've got three fingers, but there's eight notes in a measure. So we have to kind of make up for it. Now if you can, measure two is exactly like measure one, so we're just gonna put them together. Can you try playing both of them together with me? Ready, go. Measure two. A little faster. Ready, go. Now measure three, we're just going to switch it up two strings. Just to the D and the A string. So measure three sounds like this. Measure four is the same thing. Let's try playing measures one through four together slowly. And remember, I have... Um, uh, slow, uh, slow play practice speed on the side as well, where we play it all the way through slowly. Ready, go. Now when we get to measure five, we're going to do the same thing, just on the bottom two strings. But here's where it gets fun. Measure seven, we're gonna start back up at the top and we're going to add some fretting, some fingering in, okay? Uh, so nothing changes with our pick hand. Nothing changes at all. This time we're just going to, the first time we're gonna play that E string, we're gonna play the second fret. The second time we'll do the third fret and then the fifth fret for measure seven. Sounds like this. One more time. Then measure eight, we're just gonna walk it right back down. So measure seven and eight together sound like this. A little bit quicker. That's a fun exercise. That's some cool sounding licks right there. Measure nine, we're gonna do the same thing, just down a couple strings. Then measure 11, we're going to move down two more. But measure 13, we're going to add the three string uh, version of this. And this is where we spend most of our time uh, whenever we're playing the Wildwood Flower, which we'll get to in a little while. But now we're going to expand this to three strings. And this is truly just like a banjo roll. If I was going to play mandolin with my banjo picks, this is very similar to how I might play it, okay? So we're gonna start out measure 13 on the open D string. We're not fretting any notes, just concentrating on our pick hand. And then we're gonna do two upstrokes to the E and A string, and then back to the D string. And then do it again. So there's measure 13. One more time, measure 13. Measure 14 is exactly the same. Can you do that? 
When we get to measure 15, we're just going to move the whole operation up a string. For the last line of the tab, measure 17, we're going to add those same fingerings in, except now we're playing it over three strings. So measure 17 sounds like this. 18, we're just going to walk it right back down. Let's play 17 through 20 together slowly. Ready, go. Good. Now let's look at Wildwood Flower. 